Hi. This presentation is called the Picasso Matisse Paint Off. And the reason why I like to do this is because when I was in early college, late high school, I went to New York City and saw an exhibit that displayed a Picasso painting right beside a Matisse painting. And they encouraged you to compare the two. And that was the first time I've ever seen an exhibit that actually encouraged people to um, compare two artists and to look at the same, the, look at the way that they painted the same things. And so I wanted you to know that Picasso, Pablo Picasso and Matisse were born at the, around the same time period. They were friends, they hung out together and they compared work and critiqued each other's work. And so let's look at their work and how similar and different it is. And maybe this will inspire you to think about how you want to interpret your painting in the style of the Fauvism of Matisse or in the style of Cubism of Picasso or a little bit of both because they definitely shared ideas and um, techniques. And so here we go. Okay, this is called the Picasso and Matisse paint off best friends and greatest rivals. Um, they were very different types of people. Um, Picasso was known for being um, very confident. He had a big ego. He thought it was wonderful. He had many girlfriends. And Matisse, on the other hand, was known for being the sweet old man that um, loved his family and was kind to everyone and um, was definitely more low key. But they definitely hung out together and compared their work. Um, um, these are two works by um, self-portraits by both Picasso and Matisse that show their style at around the same age. One thing I think is really important that I want you to know is both artists were extremely talented painters in realism. Um, Picasso was known as a child prodigy in which he could paint better than his teachers at young age of like 11, 13, by 15 years old, he was painting extremely formal and traditional paintings um, in the glazing technique that was done for centuries. And same with Matisse. He had skill, he went to art school, he knew how to paint. Um, he was definitely talented and he could, could, could have continued to paint in the same way for the rest of his life, but neither one of those artists wanted to. They're like, artists have been painting this way for centuries and we don't wanna paint this way anymore. Although we have the skills to paint this way, we're gonna start to look at the world in a new way. And so let's look at Picasso. Picasso is known for his cubism, and he definitely tried to create multiple senses of space, but he also has unity and rhythm and variety and um, other qualities of the elements of design so that his paintings actually work. And so this very, very large painting, this painting is huge. It's in New York City. It's of the three musicians. Um, by repeating colors, like the blue color in certain areas, or repeating the texture of this dog in the background with the beard, repeating these triangles here, he creates unity in a painting. Um, by having similar marks and um, similar bouts of value in certain areas, certain um, balance of shapes, he creates harmony in his paintings. And so it doesn't matter if it's realistic or if it's more um, cubist style, it still works in the ways of the elements and principles of design. Um, Fauvism, like what we talked about before, is all about color and pattern and being able to be more arbitrary with your colors and to create more of a sense of a flatter space with design and less about creating this huge sense of depth and realism. All of the artists use the techniques that we're going to look at. Look at this beautiful broken color that's used here. Um, and I'm going to point out some of the techniques that um, we used in our practice sheet that were used by Picasso and Matisse. 
And so what we have here is a series of still lives. One of the still lives, the one on the left is by Pablo Picasso and the one on the right is by Henry Matisse. You can see they have very similar qualities. They have similar colors, similar shapes, but already Matisse is having a little bit more of the patterning. He was influenced by the fabrics of Japan and the Orient in which they had the kimonos and the beautiful silks. And Picasso was more interested in creating more geometric forms, showing multiple perspectives and keeping his um, images very squared when Matisse has a tendency to keep his rounded and fluid. Again, you can see the difference between a Picasso and Matisse painting. This right here is scumbling. This is when Picasso dry brushed on top of the painting to create the texture here. So that's scumbling. Matisse, repeated colors. Notice that all the colors in the bowls of fruit are also the colors in the piece of fabric. That is not by accident. That creates harmony in a painting. And so you can tell Matisse has bright colors and patterning. He does do some outlining, which it was totally not um, recommended at that time to create realism, but he creates these graphic um, images. Again, a bowl of fruit on a table, fruit on a table. Here's an example of dancers. Picasso's um, looking at the Egyptian eye in which there's um, multiple profiles. The idea that there's an eye on one side, but you can see the second eye. Um, interlocking bodies. He's now creating pattern in his um, artwork when Matisse has much more fluid lines, very organic, less geometric, more curved and rounded forms. Um, these are two depictions of women. I really love this um, painting by Pablo Picasso. Hopefully you're beginning to identify which one is a Picasso and which one is a Matisse, although they have the same subject matter. Look at how Picasso has the profile here matching the profile in the picture frame while still showing the three quarter view of the face, transparency in her outfit patterning that he got from Matisse and look at how the fingers blend into the books to create that sense of rhythm. And that rhythm is repeated in this hand here. Um, Matisse is arbitrary with his colors. He's just putting a sp splotch of yellow, a splotch of orange, a little bit of blue, and it still works as a portrait. This is a woman holding a fan. All the colors in her body are repeated in the background to create unity in his paintings. Here is another technique we talked about, which is sgraffito. And so in this painting, Picasso painted stripes on here. In this painting, Matisse scraped stripes into wet paint, scraped white stripes into the floor. You can see that um, perspective of showing the design and some outlining of Matisse, and then that multiple perspective being in profile, but seeing both eyes at the same time. You can see this beautiful impasto brushwork. And so as Matisse is applying the paint on the canvas, it's thick, it has underpainting. He painted the green underneath, added the darker colors on top. This is thick paint. You can actually see the brush strokes and Picasso is flattening his space, doing the flat eye and filling it with designs and patterns. Um, this I think is a tragic yet beautiful painting. It's called The Weeping Widow. The idea that she's, her eyes are open and her tears are filled in her eyes and just behind the handkerchief is her sorrow that she's covering her mouth bold, rich colors of the fauves. You can actually see the texture of the paint here. So this is impasto and there's beautiful brushwork all in the Matisse painting. This is underpainted in the dark and the stripes are painted on top of the um, green robe. And so you can see a woman with something on her face, 
is depicted in a very different way. A seated woman, um, again, this is graffito, that's here, and Picasso is using um, some base tone down to create a sense of unity. And notice how the shape of the fan matches the shapes within the nose. Notice how the outlining on the furniture matches the outlining on her face. It kind of brings you around the painting and makes you notice all aspects of it. And so this is a huge contrast of the more analytical cubism with the neutral brown tones, multiple perspectives. It's almost like she's moving, playing the mandolin. And these women, exaggerated features, large bodies, extra big hands, um, filling the space, this gorgeous patterning in the background, all trying to create a sense of design and pattern, not a painting. People go, Matisse, this doesn't look like a woman. And he goes, it's not a woman, it's a painting. It's supposed to now break beyond the realms of having to be real and is now looking at new things. These are two of their most famous works. This is called Joie de Vivre, which is the joy of life, very indicative of Matisse, curved organic shapes, all rounded, fanciful colors, yellow ground and um, pink trees, people dancing and singing. He had a very positive view of women and loved them and treated them more like goddesses. When um, Picasso's view of women, these are the dames of Avignon. These are prostitutes, um, big giant eyes staring at the men angled body parts, very different from the organic look of Matisse, um, not really inviting, staring. Picasso was definitely um, influenced by African masks and the um, art of Africa. And so he incorporated that into some of his more ugly and unattractive women. But again, it's through repetition of shape and line, through fill, filling the space, gives us more of a feeling and an emotion with the paintings than trying to depict real life. And so when we look at his their work, they almost created identical pieces. These are both line drawings of a sleeping woman. Um, one of them could have drawn it just as much as the other, um, but they're working to find their own space and their own voice while complementing one another and trying out different techniques. And so with these examples, I want you to think about how you could ma manipulate your imagery to kick up the color, create more rounded space, include patterning, in addition to maybe looking at showing multiple perspectives or making the shapes more geometric. Um, you don't have to answer who is the better artist. It's such a personal choice. And it's not about liking an artist better. It's about understanding art. And the more you understand something, the more you can appreciate it. And that way, liking it becomes secondary to um, your overall appreciation of the particular style of art. Thank you. Now let's start to make our own. <laughs> 